Hi everyone, uh, I'm Thomas Russell from Pixologic and today uh, I will continue my previous project about creating a figurine with the brush, a kind of ninja girl. Um, then first of all, I'm sorry the stream is not in uh, 1080, I'm doing that in 720. Um, I don't know why, but uh, my internet connection is very bad today. Uh, we have very bad weather outside and I guess it's coming from, from there since I'm using an LTE connection. Um, then sorry for the quality, just 20 frames per second and I hope it will be fine for you. Um, then just before starting, yes, exactly, um, a Monster Caesar. I have the form to running in the background. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that uh, before continuing this uh, project. I don't know if you were of that, but before working on this project, I did a Kylo Ren helmet, and after I did the Kylo Ren lightsaber. And the last stream, I finished, uh, I mean, this project of the Kylo Ren uh, lightsaber, showing you some, some parts, and now I'm done with the painting, painting job, sorry, of uh, the lightsaber. And, sorry, this is a little bit small for you on the webcam, but the lightsaber is done, I did the painting. It looks okay. I'm not very happy with the, the, the metallic part, but it's more coming from the painting itself. Uh, anyway, um, and let me show you some images um, just to start with. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Then when you are doing 3D printing, whatever it's a figurine or um, uh, a lightsaber, then um, as a reminder, uh, again, uh, I did that with the Form2 printer for Formlabs, uh, who uh, kindly sponsored this stream, this previous streams. Um, and uh, the good thing about resin, it's very easy to clean, to sand, and to work on that. Um, and then you see this is a big mess, <laughs> always, and you have the supports I removed, starting to sand, and all of these sanding sponges that I explained during the last stream. Um, I, give, uh, I gave a link also where to, to find these uh, sanding sponges some tools um, then quickly I had to prepare the painting stuff um, meaning painting uh, means uh, uh, also um, protecting some parts just for one thing of course for the painting itself but another thing which is very important is I will need to glue most of this part and to glue I'm using the crazy glue or super glue um, but if you start to put paint uh, some painting on top of your part and you will want to glue everything uh, the, the, the bonding will be not very strong in fact it will be weaker because of the painting then I'm using some uh, um, uh, oh, uh, masking tape sorry uh, masking tape to protect some areas and as you can see there is a lot of small scratch on these areas, it's not a mistake. In fact, with my tool, which is here of this one, I'm doing a lot of small scratch uh, to avoid having a very clean and, and, uh, and um, a very smooth surface. It's just to increase uh, um, the, 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 the bond, uh, the bonding, um, binding, bond, bind, binding uh, between two parts with the glue. Then this is very important. And I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned this. Um, uh, this uh, masking uh, painting uh, um, rubber, I don't know exactly the name, which is masking uh, Mr. Masking Soul R, uh, which is Japanese product. You have something similar, I think, in other brands. And, um, and I use uh, uh, that on multiple areas to protect again from the painting. Uh, um, uh, the areas where I will use uh, uh, the glue. And I don't need to be very accurate. My idea was just to protect most of the part to be sure that I will have enough uh, uh, surface to uh, glue all the parts together. Um, then I started to paint uh, and to paint, then this is just the bottom cap uh, that you see here. Um, and uh, uh, you see I did all of this kind of weathering effect of there, mixing multiple techniques, mainly the dry uh, painting uh, or scratching some stuff. But this is a kind of um, not bronze, but I don't know the name in English of this metal, but uh, Leighton, not sure. Um, this metallic part, but in fact, when you are spraying the paint, it's fine, but after uh, a day, it's not as shiny as it was originally. Even if I polish and apply some, um, some, some coat on top of that, 
not very happy with this metallic part, which is not as good as I would like to. Um, and uh, now then the, uh, almost everything has been uh, uh, I mean the assembly of almost all the parts. This one are extra parts. I did almost all the sanding. And then uh, this is the bottom part, then the sanding. Then I'm using an airbrush. I'm using, of course, uh, uh, um, brushes and regular paints. Uh, and now this is the model uh, done on a stand, uh, which is just behind. And the last part, which will be just below, which will be... Um, uh, oh, shit. Not the last order. Uh, ah. <laughs> um... Not the Empire, <laughs> just after. Where is Cairo? And oh, I forgot the name. Just I have the, the logo. Ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry. Um, then the logo below, and it's in the printer right now. Uh, and I still have one hour and twenty three minutes of print. Uh, and probably during this stream, this stream you will hear the printer uh, uh, just raising the building platform at one stage. And I think I will let you know that time. Um, and uh, I will do the cleaning, of course, after the um, uh, the stream. Then I'm pretty happy with the result, to be honest. Um, this version will be just to be like that without blades, uh, the plasma blades. I will reprint and I already started to reprint some parts and I will redo it later. I will try to find a way to make the metallic part more shiny. I need to really investigate in that and uh, trying to see how I can deal with the blades because I will need to sculpt them. I already have the LEDs but again it's quite uh, uh, some time and everything is, is empty it has been Halloween then it will be very easy to uh, put all the, um, uh, the electronic inside and just the last thing it will leave France for Los Angeles uh, probably Tuesday morning because there is uh, uh, the uh, road show from Form Labs um, Form Labs doing a road show all across the US and the next stop will be in Los Angeles February the 8th and 9th if I'm not wrong um, then Form Labs will uh, present their printer and also Paul Gabory from Pixelogic will be there uh, for, for a talk and then uh, we'll have some print uh, done with the brush and the Form 2 printer which will be presented at that time and the lightsaber will be presented there um, uh is Thomas can randomly freezing <laughs> yes i can uh, what 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 yeah for the next okay i, I will go back to uh, to his stuff anyway um is the stream quality okay there is not too much freezing or or, or, or buffering just let me know okay let me close that Okay, now let's go back to this uh, uh, project of figurine of this ninja girl. Perhaps I will move slightly or, or change some directions. Um, uh, then today I will continue the body. I hope I will be close to be done um, because I still need to do the hands and fit in terms of complex shapes but I really need to refine again and again the body a lot of parts I'm not very happy with that I slightly edited the model since the last stream I changed a little bit the shape of the eyes uh, a little bit the shape of the face and the ears um, mainly if you look at the eyes it's not anymore uh, spheres I use but let me solo that uh, you see, I, I just flattened because it was too rounded, which doesn't fit the, the Japanese anime style, manga style. Again, I'm, I want to be close at this style, but since I'm not an Asian artist, not a Japanese, and it really does a difference for a lot of, uh, of artwork, at least for my opinion, then I'm not, try, I'm not trying to compete with them, but I'm trying at least to be close to this style. Um, okay, thank you, Mother Kainer, for the feedback. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Remove the solo mode. Then, because if you look at the body right now, this is what I have. A lot of things are totally off, and, and I totally accept that. <laughs> uh, like, I need to rework the arms and bust and, and uh, hips, legs, feet, I mean, a lot of things. And of course, there is no hairs. And this is all the stuff I need to, uh, to work on today. And 
Again, I'm talking a lot, you know that. Sometimes I can be also very silent when I'm sculpting in the zone. Uh, but feel free to give me your comments. And if you have questions, also let me know. There is no problems about that. Okay. And I will try to keep an eye on the, the chat. I'm sorry, but not the same screen. Okay. Um, then what I need to work on, I, I want to refine some parts uh, first on the on the boost. Um, let me go back to the body and I will hide the arms. Come on, Thomas. Uh, select lasso. Because I need to, I'm not happy with the shape and uh, uh, some proportions. And uh, I will try again to uh, just to, sh to reshape because the legs are, are too much uh, uh, in the back and I would like to um, to have a wider gap and perhaps uh, not these massive legs, not that massive. Um, let me pick also my mask lasso. trying to refine everything as much as I can. Because I want to keep this curvature, but I think it's a little bit too much on the hips. Okay, um, I will use transpose for that. I prefer using transpose. And I will just rotate. Oh, need to be very careful with the legs because if I'm connecting them and intersecting them, then when I will uh, uh, move them back, uh, probably the brush will stretch some vertices. And I need to be very careful with that. And again, I will move slightly. See, I'm a really big fan of uh, uh, the gizmo. But for some operations, I still prefer using uh, transpose. I think I need to move them on, not that much, but yeah, the shape need to be refined. Don't forget that you can use, and this is something I love with uh, transpose is with Alki, you can just bend slightly some shapes uh, like that between the two points of transpose. As you can see and, and probably notice during the last stream is I'm using a lot, a lot the move brush with very small uh, drag and drop for for the shape. Uh, this is really a way of working. From I mean, uh, I'm, I'm using doing that really a lot. It allows me to refine uh, in a very progressive way. 
and because I'm working on multiple locations at the same time, for me it's really uh, what's working the best for me. But at some stages, it's better to use your regular sculpting brushes. part as well I'm sorry because I'm really lacking of vocabulary for the anatomy and especially in English What I would like really to, to reproduce is this shape of having the apps being really in front and having uh, the, the, all the shape around the hips really going inside like that. It's something I need to, to rework on and probably need to refine the breast, which are a bit too. Um, I have my polygons are very close to each other here, and um, it's it's make things really visible. I mean, this kind of cubic shape, which is not what I'm looking for. And again, I could go with big breasts and things like that, but it's not for this project what I really want. I want to keep that, let's say, more realistic. Not realistic in the perfect shape and, and things like that, but uh, not that uh, what you see in most anime and, uh, and mangas. And again, uh, all of that will be uh, only partially visible because I will have a lot of clothes on top of that. Oh, let me think that I need to... Do, 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 uh, Pinterest. Where are you, Pinterest? Uh, where is my board? Uh, Ninja. Okay, I, I did some quick researches on uh, on Pinterest. She's really something that I really uh, I enjoy uh, Pinterest to to do some searches. Uh, it's not really to uh, to say I will do this one or this one. It's just for me to look uh, at uh, inspirations, and um, I think I will go more to this kind of. Sorry, it's a, it's a little bit too small, but this kind of of shape you see really large hips but more in fact not that large legs a little bit for this one but uh, i'm perhaps more looking to this type uh, this style and that's why i will refine also the head because i want to have a head which is more let's say adult and uh, not uh, let's say um more uh, let's say more seinen and not really shonen uh, if you know this difference of styles I and mean, of age of target age for uh, mangas uh, you see i really love this kind of style but um i already my last figurine uh, was to be from near automata which has also uh, 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 um, um, i don't know the name but stuff in front of the, the eyes and I don't want to do something like that. Uh, for me it was more to look at which type of clothes I will do and some accessories and things like that but anyway uh, perhaps the breast will be partially visible or not I'm not sure yet but at least uh, not fully visible then um, anyway uh, 
but I'm not yet at uh, at this stage. I still need to refine the body uh, and be sure it will be fine enough. Oops. Uh, perhaps I would sculpt now, I'm not using the move brush. Let's try to be a little bit faster because I don't want to spend uh, uh, all my streams in doing just doing the body uh, because accessories and clothes will take quite some time. It's, in fact, building the shapes are always something which is quick to do, but refining, I mean, doing all the details and uh, uh, is always something which takes quite some time. And I will again need to, to work a little bit on the topology because right now this topology is coming from Zero Mesha, which is uh, something I really love because it's it's a time saver and most of the time it's doing a, a great job of one what you want to do. But um, I want to have a better control of on my my topology flow. Um, let me use my this one because I'm a little bit too far. See, these shapes are not natural at all. Okay, let me switch to double side view. Display properties, double side to see what is on the other side of the model and I'm able to do some changes like that and you see it's easier to go inside like that than trying to walk from the outside and uh, just trying to deal with your model it's uh, most of the time it's faster like that but let's say it's not very natural to do this way of sculpting because you are inside of the model and not outside. Um, okay, I'm increasing the visibility. Like that. Sorry, I'm spending quite some time on this area, but this is always the part which are visible <laughs> in anime and mangas, and I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to do that uh, if possible, the best way. Um, but I know that when I will define the pose and I will try to do very dynamic pose, uh, of course, I will need to rework, but well. Uh, this is how I am. Okay, it makes everything visible. Oh, I forgot about the arms. Now 
Not a lot of commands tonight. If you have some inspirations or, or thought about what could be nice as a ninja character, let, let me know. I mean, I'm fine to to change the design of my my character and going in perhaps in some of your, your directions. What you think could be interesting to to do? I'm totally open to do some changes. Since I'm working just uh, 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 just like that without ref real references, I'm really okay to. Uh, change and just let me know. Also, for your information, I have some um, some figurines around me. Uh, I some of you already know that my office is full of figurines, but uh, I have some figurines like that just next to me, which I'm not really working on that one, but it's um, just to look at some kind of uh, references. Uh, I also have I also have this one, which I really enjoy. I really love this figurine. Uh, and uh, I've been lucky to uh, see the prototype in Japan. <laughs> and um, and um, Safar, Safar. <laughs> no, I, I won't uh, uh, rig this model in Maya. Uh, perhaps I will rig it, rig it in ZBrush. Uh, it's been a while, to be honest, I didn't rig in ZBrush, but probably for this project, I will do some rig. Not the character. I don't think I will do the character, but I will do the hands. Because uh, uh, as a kind of reminder, uh, because I explained that during the last stream, this ninja girl will be like Bayonetta, and I heard about that uh, during this stream, unfortunately. But if you know the game Bayonetta, the character is using her hairs for a lot of things. And it was my idea, in fact, uh, to this ninja girl using her hairs to, to fight and uh, being able to reshape her hairs have multiple things including big fist uh, uh, just to fight and then I will probably for the, the, the final model for the pose and to having something very dynamic with the hairs and the fits and having to, to do uh, at least two different fits fist in addition to our, uh, her own hands then I will need to build four hands then probably I will use uh, just one hand and I will rig this hand with these spheres inside of the brush just to do the pose and after I will work on that and reuse this model multiple times. This is probably my uh, my high tea. And um, Biscops um, Romu, sorry for your nickname if I don't pronounce that the best way. Um, do you rely heavily on anatomy references? In fact, not enough. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I hope to have one day more time to work on uh, on references, anatomical references. I have just around me, you see this uh, uh, ecorche from 3D Total, a female one, uh, which is of course very useful. The problem with anatomy is if you are looking just about what is outside, it's not enough to understand how to build your volume, how to build your mass. You need to understand the bone structures, the muscle structures, and not only the structures, the, the, the muscles which are on the surface, but the ones which are below, which will define why there is a bulge here, or this shape is like that. Uh, 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 fats, uh, 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 masses, skin, tension, tendons, a lot of things need to be, uh, um, um, you need to understand a lot of things about anatomy. And on my side, I spent just the time to look at what is on the surface outside, not what enough what is inside. Then I'm trying to consider everything, but I'm not the best one in anatomy. Then I have multiple écorché. I have the biggest, big one from, um, let me switch from the webcam, you will see that. Uh, sorry for the green screen, but you see I have some figurines. I have the big écorché from uh, Anatomy Tools. Uh, and of course I have multiple books. Uh, Okay, the webcam is a good direction. Yeah, and yes, I'm trying. But for anime st 
style, a lot of people think that anatomy, you don't care. I mean, this character is not really realistic. But yes, I think it's very important to rely on, on good anatomy. And this is one of my works during the next... Sorry, I'm talking uh, a lot about that, but I think this is very important. Um, in this next month, probably between the uh, beginning of April, probably, I will start to do some stream perhaps more during the French time, and I will try every day to do some anatom uh, uh, anatomical uh, sculpting, uh, really working on bones and skulls and uh, uh, also for the head and, and muscle. really try to think about écorché. And it's been a while I want to do an écorché from scratch, really to, to understand better. And uh, if I had the time, a little bit of money, I think I would do the Scott Eaton uh, workshops uh, training, which is about anatomy, which is just fantastic. Uh, body in motion, if I remember. Then yes, uh, um, I'm not really uh, uh, only answer to your question, but just gave you my opinion about how much anatomy is important. And that's why my models sometimes are not accurate as they should be, because I am lacking of some uh, um, uh, understanding about anatomy. Yes, it's been quite some time I'm sculpting and modeling and doing characters, but it needs to be improved. Safar, just, just to come back, come back about your question about Mayan rigging. I, I'm trying to do almost everything inside of the brush. I, I, I'm not against Maya or any or other kind of software, but I'm, I don't like spending too much time uh, going in other software because for me it's time consuming, except if it's a big, heavy task. If you tell me, oh, Thomas, uh, for what you do, you should, you should do UVs and because this is for real time and video games, I would say yes, perhaps not using UV Master, but more using a real UV editor because I want to have a better control of my UV space and my textiles, etc., etc. But for figurines, to be honest, you can do everything inside of the brush, especially since uh, for R8 and the live boolean, um, it's it's way enough to do uh, 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 everything about your your models. Uh, because before doing the um, uh, the the split of parts was for some very complex projects, perhaps uh, not enough. Yes, Dynamesh was great for that but you may lack some uh, Boolean operation. And now it's just so much enjoyable. Uh, I, I really, really love that. Um, let me think about something about this head. Uh, sorry, I, I'm talking and thinking at the same time. Because I think I need to change this. It's a bit like that. that much and uh, don't forget that when you are sculpting this is a mistake I, 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 I see on regular basis to, 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 to new users, new people, I mean, people who, who are coming for more traditional modeling and not uh, sculpting. Uh, it's like when you're working with real clay, uh, it's very, very important to change your point of view. Always, always, always. Don't stick to one point of view. Uh, just, just try to go all around and, and see from a different perspective your model.
at least this is my way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael, uh, yes, if I was on the, uh, just on the ass or <laughs> some other areas, yeah, it may look awkward. <laughs> well, I think this stream is safe for work, but it depends on your work, I think. <laughs> Oops. Ah, uh, also, as a reminder, I'm working without the perspective. You see, with and without. Uh, I always prefer working without the symmetry as much as possible. Oh, uh, the perspective, the symmetry. Uh, yes, perspective, sorry. Oh. I think I would be very happy to be in my bed tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> I have a big lack of sleep uh, recently. I mean, it's been months now, but uh, I really start to feel the, um, the lack of sleep, especially when I'm streaming in English, where I need to focus way more on what I'm doing because uh, I need to think in English, which is ob obviously not my language, and trying uh, to be very careful of my vocabulary and trying to avoid having this real French accent. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's um, that's not that easy for me. At least I'm trying to do my best, and I hope it's okay for you. Yeah, I think it's quite too thick. Yes, just put the red, red wax on, it will be safe for walk. <laughs> ah, red wax, come on. <laughs> um, well, to be honest, it's been something like, what? Four years, I didn't use the red wax material. Uh, but this material was great when it has been released. I mean, it was, of course, the first matte cap and the matte cap by default because you have the cavities. And speaking of that, you see, by using this material, which is a different one, I see more mistakes. I see that my shape is not good at all. Uh, I have some areas here. Then it's always very easy, to, uh, very important, sorry, not easy, to change of material and see your model in different way. Uh, especially because the red wax has this cavity stuff then you see exactly uh, uh, where you have some irregularities, irregularities uh, which is something very important to consider because when you will do your 3D print, um, all this kind of imperfection will be visible if you have an accurate printer, which is what I'm using. I'm using the Form 2. Uh, I have another printer, which is a Slash Plus, which is also an SLA printer, which is but using a screen uh, to print. I mean, all these printers, the, the Slash Plus is 75 microns for the uh, horizontal resolution and can go up to 10 microns for each layer. I'm not using this printer at this resolution, but uh, you can be very, very accurate. Um, then uh, that's why it's it's very important. That's why I have multiple materials. I like working with this polyskin material provided in the brush, which is one of my, my mat cap. In fact, I did. Uh, I love this uh, um, Ralph Trump, 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 uh, uh, material. Um, this one, uh, I really love it. But unfortunately, it makes the model nicer than how it is in reality. Um, then that's why I always try to to work with different materials and see uh, uh, how it is. And in fact, your model should should look nice, whatever the material you are using. Um, and also sometimes just looking at uh, the silhouette, uh, just with your model, you see I have big problems with the legs so far. Um, anyway, 
uh, I really love, uh, really love, love. I did the mix of love and like. I really like uh, uh, this uh, gray material uh, as well. Um, something to fix as well is yeah. Yeah, I need to add some tension for the biceps biceps The problem is as well uh, this separation. You see, uh, uh, it's going from one side to the other side, and let me just mask this part. Because the armpits, when uh, when you are in this not uh, more natural pose and not a T pose, this is where uh, uh, things may start to be uh, problematic. But I, I need to be very careful about the muscle because I don't want her to be, even if she's a kind of ninja, I don't want her to be too much uh, muscular. Uh, I want to be very careful with that. Question, do you want to have some music for the next next stream? Or with what music is it better? the volume on the uh, scapula ah not scapula not sure the name in English which is omoplate in French <laughs> that's the problem we don't have the same names in all the languages for the anatomy which is uh, kind of problematic Sigur Rush, I'm thinking of workflow of free sketching some ornaments on a flat surface and then having a relative easy workflow of quadding the whole thing to an economic polycon, which is important for the next thing. Then later, I can transfer it to Fusion for CAD export and milling. Yep, uh, that's why um, uh, Zero Measure is great because Zero Measure is only using quads when it's doing its retopology. And uh, we have quite some people using T splines. Uh, also, you have Cyborg 3D. Cyborg 3D is a software um, uh, which is able to convert uh, 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 subdivision surfaces to CAD. Uh, when and when I mean CAD, uh, CAD I mean uh, 
uh, file format which can be read by most of his CAD software, which can be uh, 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 SolidWorks or Pro Engineer, uh, Pro E or etc. Uh, uh, etc. Et uh, or even Rhino. And um, it's um, these are, I mean, need to have some file format. And if you are sending to them some ZBrush model, which are very, very uh, heavy in terms of polygon counts, uh, it's problematic. And then T-Spline or, or even Fusion now from what people told me, I didn't try it. I need to spend quite some time in Fusion. I need to learn this software. Um, but well, again, <laughs> it's a matter of time. Um, yeah, this software need to have this, uh, uh, this NUP stuff, uh, being able to open a, a step file or IGS or, or SAT file. And uh, you need to, to, to have the good file format, which is a problem. But if you're working in the, uh, 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 let's say, uh, in the jewelry design industry or other industry where you need to export your model and you mentioned about milling, uh, mining, milling, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, it's very important, and you have some uh, uh, some company who are doing mining stuff or printing stuff or CNC who just accept uh, uh, step files or IGS. If you send them an OBG file or STL, they don't want to deal with that. Then it's quite problematic. And um, but this software about uh, uh, converting the model. Uh, they can be uh, um, constrained about the number of polygons you are sending I mean, to this software, um, which can be problematic. That's why optimizing your model uh, is very important and also to have nice NURBS patches. Um, then uh, Sigur Rush, I mean, I need to see more your project. Uh, I perhaps can give you uh, some, um, some feedback because I've been working in NURBS software before. Um, but well, I'm kind of blind right now. But we have more and more people who want to use ZBrush because they want to create this uh, like uh, by hand uh, style stuff, uh, artwork. But um, I mean, uh, I've been working with some very high end jewelry designer companies, especially in France in Place Vendôme, if you know this, uh, this place, which is very famous for jewelry design in, in France. And uh, when I see what they try to do with CAD software, stuff they did a month to do something that you can do in, let's say, in a single day with ZBrush was, uh, I mean, just uh, uh, something, a revolution for them. Um, but of course, they need to transfer that to their own pipeline and workflow, which is not always very easy. Yes, yeah, Rush, just drop me a, a message on Discord, and it will be uh, it will be easier. But yes, you need to have all quite base and having a nice topology, if possible, and uh, it can be quite some constraint for some some people and some models. Uh, I think I'm quite large. I will start soon to work on the um, on the feet and hands because this is uh, the last part which is missing for me to really finish the body uh, because there is no real meaning about let's say working on uh, the proportions if something is wrong um, with uh, just a, a part like I mean I can't work on the proportions without having hands at the good size and and feet and. Uh, So for the eyes, I wanted to do something more uh, smaller eyes. Uh, 
but again the eyes I will need to uh, probably work more on them um, I'm on top of resolution uh, don't have more polygons shit um, I will need to refine that uh, when I will do uh, probably a, a retopology on it because I don't have enough polygons right now to do what I would like to do and you see I have this kind of angle and uh, I mean it's not a, a nice uh, surface Saves your brush, save. Hi, Golden Gamer. What I'm doing right now is more kind of placeholder. Um, Since it will be probably more on some uh, a real 3D shape. Yeah, I think perhaps more something like that. Again, I will need to rework on the head, but uh, uh, this is more what I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm looking at. Up. Okay, I just need to finish the breast, which I don't like. Sorry, I, I'm spending quite some time on that, but uh, uh, I may be annoying, but uh, each time I see something which is not good, I, I want to fix it. Why I still want to work on these hands, and trust me, I don't like creating hands. Uh, it's always something which takes quite some time, and I could do it the easy way and reloading a model, but uh, I think it's a good opportunity to, to create one. Let me change of material. See, I'm really working on the silhouette to see from all the point of view if it's, everything is fine. Let's stop with that for now. And let's work on these hands.
And for your information, I'm currently listening to some Japanese music. <laughs> I'm listening to a concert live of Maya Sakamoto. But I don't want to have some copyright infringement and I'm not streaming the music, I'm sorry. Um, How do you, you do have such nice topology yet a good level of detail and smooth surface? Um, in fact, my topology is not very nice. Uh, let me display my polyframe. Uh, what I mean by not very nice, I mean for what I'm doing right now, it's quite enough. But it doesn't flow exactly what I would like to have. Uh, you see on the breast, it's Let's say it's okay, but when you go to the face, you see it's not what topology, which I mean, the way it should be, like this kind of uh, a quad, which is not at the good point. I have an extraordinary, extraordinary point on this area, which is close to the lips, not nice for the the, um, uh, the eyes and thing like that. That's why I have some pinching. You see this kind of pinch I have here which is, uh, of course, there is a crud, but not flowing. You see my, uh, my muscles and uh, for the legs, of course, this is good. Uh, I use the remesher for that. And because I'm not using Dynamesh, but I'm using levels of subdivision, you see, I'm able to increase. Let me just open my geometry palette. You see, I'm increasing my subdivision levels like that. I can go up and down in quality, meaning that if you want to change globally the shape of your model, it's better to have a low topology just to move small points, which will be more these control points of your model on your base level. And then later, uh, if you want to have more uh, um, working more on, on details, uh, it's better to work on the highest level because the brush anyway will propagate along the levels what you're doing. Um, yes, in the background, this is uh, the noise uh, is coming from the Form 2 printer, which which will be done in 47 minutes, uh, approximately. And each time you hear noise, in fact, it's uh, the wiper, which is a kind of plastic part, which is just mixing the resin and cleaning the bottom of the resin tank. Um, yeah, I really love this printer, to be honest. Uh, I hope it will continue like that, but so far I still have zero failure, which is something fantastic. I had the Form 1 before and Form 1 Plus because it has been upgraded to upgraded to Form 1 Plus. And I had sometimes some failure, uh, a lot with the Form 1, a lot less with the Form 1 Plus, but now with the Form 2, it's just uh, so much enjoyable. I mean, I don't have surprises when I'm using pr the printer, which is very important because when you are printing, um, with resin, uh, uh, which can be expensive, uh, the cost of one liter of resin, uh, of the regular resin, uh, is uh, $169, uh, which is already quite some money. And uh, if you are using some other resin, like the dental ones or, or tough one, or all this resin are a lot more expensive, then you don't want to have failures. And so far, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, I hope it will continue like that. And stuff which is very funny is you can also uh, uh, print models which are way bigger than uh, what the printer is supposed to print in terms of maximum size. Uh, let me just, it's slightly off topic. Um, uh, Chigli check, uh, je répondrai juste après. Sorry for the French. Um, uh, 
Let me check before. Uh, 3D print base. You see, this is what you see right now is the base, uh, not the base, but uh, more the, the support of the lightsaber. And uh, this, uh, this base, in fact, you, you are, this support in, uh, will be just attached to a base, which will be in front here. And it will just snap the, 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 the lightsaber on these areas and this stuff will just keep the angle for the, the lightsaber. And uh, it's quite a big model. And if you look on the side, like this, you see that it's very, very close to the top. And you see from the top, I'm barely at the limits of the uh, X, Y, uh, y and Z uh, uh, working plane. Uh, because if you are rotating your model to be just flat, uh, uh, like this, you see the difference in size? That's why you need to always keep in mind that you can always try to find a way to rotate your model and, and uh, uh, making this part fitting in the build platform. And the model which is currently printing is this one. No, I don't save. This is the base and you see it will connect on, on this area. And this one as well is quite big, uh, but you can just fit that uh, on the side. And you have some supports, and yeah, it's uh, it's quite massive, but it's what is needed anyway. Uh, sorry for this uh, little, uh, this uh, small off topic. Um, sorry, I just do a very uh, uh, short stuff in French. Um, uh, Chigil check, uh, ce qui serait le mieux? Uh, parce que le problème c'est un petit peu long à expliquer ça et, et là c'est en plus en français dans un stream qui est en anglais. Euh, le plus simple, euh, euh, souscris-toi à ma chaîne euh, Twitch et je vais essayer en fait de faire un stream par rapport à ça euh, peut-être demain soir. Euh, non pas demain soir, euh, mardi soir. Donc euh, inscris-toi à ma chaîne et euh, voilà, ce sera le plus simple. Et éventuellement tu m'auras un petit email à thomasroussel at polyscult.com sur polyscult.com et tu auras donc mon, mon email. Sorry guys for, for this part in French. Because the question was very interesting but uh, it was in French. I don't know if I can do it in, in English but it was the, the question between the difference between dividing your model, subdivision levels and Dynamesh. Um, which is very interesting question but may, maybe a, a, a long one. Um, but a good question. And especially for me, I'm switching a lot between subdivision levels and Dynamesh. Because, uh, is it okay in English or not? Uh, Chigil check. Just let me know if in English it's fine, then I can explain in English. Like that, everybody will be, uh, uh, will have the, uh, the information. Just, just tell me. Then I will, I, I may do that answer this question after switching to uh, the hands creation. Okay, l let's do that in uh, in English in few words. But first, I will save. <laughs> Okay, let me just explain in, in few words. Uh, let me start with, you see this um, polysphere, which is a primitive. And I will reduce the resolution to be um, 32 and let's say uh, 16. Like that I have almost quads. And uh, I will create a polymesh 3D. And now as a subtool, I will duplicate this, uh, this model. And this one, let me rename that as Dynamesh and this one as subdivision. Uh, then, you see I have uh, uh, two uh, 
exactly the same model, okay, same structure. The difference is the first one I will then convert to DynaMesh, just to have different types of models. Then DynaMesh, you have this big button to enable the DynaMesh, and you have below uh, a slider for the resolution. And the resolution, in fact, when you are using DynaMesh, ZBrush will be using a voxel technology, which are in a way so, some uh, 3D pixels, uh, which are in fact small cubes, and you, and you will try to fit this model in a 128 by 128 by 128 resolution. In fact, you have a 128 cubes on the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And then ZBrush will put your model inside and we'll see which uh, uh, um, cubes, small voxels, are intersected by these spheres. And then we use all these intercity uh, uh, small cubes, these voxels, to reshape the model. That's why you have this resolution. The higher the, re the resolution will be, the smaller will be the, the cube, because we'll have more cubes for the same size, and the more accurate will be the model. Then this is the foundation of DynaMesh. I'm using voxel to build a model. Let me click on it, and you see right now what I have. Let me just hide the other model. Then you see ZBrush just DynaMesh my model and convert this, convert this model to, uh, to uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this new shape. It just rebuild the topology. You see I have now different polygons and almost, let's say, even uh, an even topology in terms of density. Okay, uh, And as you can see as well, before my resolution was, let me just go back in history, uh, I had all these quads, oops, sorry, Sorry, I, I had all of these squads, and when I did this DynaMesh operation, I still see this kind of faceted aspect for my sphere. Um, simply because ZBrush is interpreting and converting your model, but the way it is, then if I have very smooth areas, if my resolution of the DynaMesh is good enough, it will be very smooth. But if I have very angular areas, it will keep these angular areas. It's just rebuilding your model with a new topology, with just raw polygons. Let me just go back and for this model, I will use a clip brush like clip curve and clip like that. You see, I have a flat areas. And if I DynaMesh, you see it created exactly the same thing. Then the DynaMesh, the first thing it, it, it does is just converting my model, whatever is the system structure, subdivision levels or, 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 or then a primitives. I mean, it needs to have some polygons and convert to, low, to, to other polygons. And at this stage, you can sculpt on your model like that, like you are sculpting on any kind of other models. But at some stage, if you, let's say, pick your move brush and you start to stretch your model, just like that. Say, oh, that's great. I can smooth a little bit. You can sculpt. But if you want to have some fine details on this area, let's say I want to, to put my logo on my name. Let's say I want to write Thomas. What? Uh, I can't write Thomas, but I don't understand because here I can't write Thomas. Even if the resolution is not very good, but I can here, but not here. Why? Because if you look at the topology, when I, I move my vertices, I stretch my model and I stretch the polygons. It means that on this area, I don't have enough polygons because the brush, when you are sculpting, the brush mainly is moving the existing vertices to build the shape. Then that's why you are, stretch, you are stretching the model. It's great for the shape, but not for the details. This is where comes the, the, the DynaMesh again is, you remember the first time I click on this DynaMesh, it's just converting the existing model to uh, a new topology, even topology. And when you are in DynaMesh, you can say at any time, update my DynaMesh. Then I'm updating my DynaMesh. And I have now this new topology, which, which have even polygons everywhere. Then this is, again, the foundation of DynaMesh. But there is a downside for the DynaMesh. Is the more details you want to have, the higher resolution you, you need to have. If I really want to have a nice name, oh, I, it's not very nice. I need to have more polygons. Let's, let's increase my resolution. Let's say uh, uh, something like 472. I don't care. I'm, up, I'm updating and you don't really see the difference. But if you look at the topology, it's way more dense. It's denser. And now I can write, you see, now it's way better, it's more accurate. Then 
Okay, then why having a low polygons if I can put way more polygons with Dynamesh? Then now it's coming the real downside for, at least for me when I'm sculpting is, Dynamesh is great to shape your model, to, to find the shape. But when it comes to refinement, and you will see after the difference with polygon uh, subdivision levels is, now if you want to reshape your model, you are shaping a lot, a lot of polygons. And if you want to have a nice and clean deformation to have a round shape, it's very long because you see, you are moving a lot of polygons and uh, you don't have a, a lot of flexibility. Then again, Dynamesh is great if you are using your brush strokes like that. To, okay, I want to have something more rounded and then you are sculpting on top of that. And then you are smoothing. But even when you are smoothing, it requires a lot more smoothing because you have a lot more polygons. Then at this stage, this is where Dynamesh may be problematic because if you want to add small details, okay. But if you want to shape again and refine your shape, it will be very heavy, very uh, um, more uh, time consuming and your model will have, will have less flexibility. While if I'm going to this, go back now to this, subdivision levels, let me hide. And now I have my sphere here. Let me uh, display again the topology. Um, and I'm dividing my model. I'm going in geometry and I click on divide and I click divide once and twice. Now I have 746 polygon. If I'm sculpting, you see, I still have my roof uh, uh, polygons like that. It's not very nice, but I can divide again and again and now I have better strokes. And if I'm using, like before, my brush, you see, I can have something which is way nicer. And you see that then why not dividing until the end? Because first thing to do is, and this is a common mistake for beginners, is I can put a lot of polygons in the brush, let's put a lot of polygons. Just only add subdivision levels when you are lacking some details. There is no need to put a lot of stress on your computer, your CPU, if you don't need that. Then, now the good thing is, okay, yeah, now I want to reshape my my part because I want to be not that rounded, but more stretched like this. And then you can use your move brush and like before, starting to stretch. And at this stage, you will have the same issue with the Dynamesh because you are, it's less visible because I have less polygon for this one, but it will be difficult to have a nice rounded uh, 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 surface. Let me just go back now in history. But the good thing is because I have the subdivision levels, I can go back in a resolution or going up again, down and up. This is dynamic. And now if I'm at this level, you see I have very few polygons. Then it's more convenient to do a global deformation all along your model like that. You have few points to control. And now if you go back in, uh, in subdivision levels, you see I press the D key and I still have my curve, which is way nicer than before and all my details. And again, if I want, I can uh, adding more details or adding an extra subdivision levels to have something nicer like that. And going back and say, oh, not even in between, let's say because it's too low. I don't see my details, but at this stage, I still see my details and I can use my move brush just to refine the shape I did before. I have less points, but enough to see roughly what is my shape. And when I go up, I deform my model. Why Dynamesh is not possible. But then that's why I prefer working with subdivision levels. But there is, again, a downside of subdivision levels is you can't modify the topology of your model. Each time, you, and there is some operations inside of the brush which doesn't work with subdivision levels. An example, if I'm using an insert mesh brush, then E and I, 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 let's say body part, and I want to add, I don't know, an ear and say, oh, this model is composed of multiple subdivision levels. It won't work. Then this is one of the downside. Or if you want to have a big stretch and having some curvature on your model, you will just stretch your existing polygons. And there is benefit for the subdivision levels and there is benefits for the Dynamesh. Um, and on my side, I, I will explain that during, not this stream probably, but the next stream is, I'm switching a lot between Dynamesh and subdivision levels. But to do that, I need to work with multiple subtools, working with projection, which is a little bit technical, but 
working with both is really powerful. Uh, during the previous stream, uh, when I started to work on this body, I started with this here. It's what I, I did uh, 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 for the initial shape. And then I did a Dynamesh. I sculpted to have the main shape of my model. And when I was happy globally with the, 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 the proportions, I switched to subdivision levels just to refine this proportion. But you see, and I may not do that today, I don't know, but when I will be done with the hand, I will need to connect my hand to this body. And because the topology will change, I will lose my subdivision levels. Then I will probably go back to Dynamesh, and then after recreating my subdivision levels by using uh, zebra measures and projection of details. And it's a little bit quite technical, but it's very, very powerful. Okay, I'm sorry for this long uh, uh, explanation. I hope it made sense. Uh, for you, I hope. Let me delete that. Delete all. Okay. Then now let's um, create these uh, hands, at least one hand. Uh, and to do that, I will use these spheres. And I will start with my this sphere model. And um, then it's been a while, a while, a while. I didn't do hands, and I hope it will be okay. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, at least for now, fingers. I will add the fifth one soon. Come on. Draw. And you see these spheres is something which is unfortunately, uh, since the addition of Dynamesh, not used anymore. And I think this is quite a mistake because it can be very, very powerful. This is just few points to manipulate, to, to, to build your shape. Uh, and I think that's quite important. Um, Yeah, you can see uh, Gemini AUS. Um, it's uh, you can see the voxel in fact with Dynamesh or not only Dynamesh but with <coughs> sorry um, with unified skin, which is coming from just an example. Let me clone this model to have a copy. Okay, now this is a copy, and okay like that. And let me just Dynamesh. But if I Dynamesh my model geometry, let me kill my subdivision levels. Um, uh, Dynamesh, you have the blur values, and now if I go to 32, um, no, I thought it was. Oh no, really? I thought. Uh, then go in unified skin, which is in fact the uh, um, the function to uh, which is used by Dynamesh, and I will lower the resolution, let's say to 80, and I will make my my model, and now. You see that my resolution is way too low, but this is what it did. And if I go back and say now I want perhaps a little bit higher resolution, you see, then of course increasing the resolution uh, will add more voxels. And this is what the brush is doing for the Dynamesh. But of course, with a smoothing in between and, and some optimization. But internally, this is what the brush is doing. And based on that, it will rebuild your model. Uh, Sip 2, let me delete all of that because I don't need to keep that. Uh, Uh, I need to increase the scale again of my fingers, of my first phalanges. And if you press the shift key when you are inserting uh, these spheres, uh, it will keep the same size as the previous, previous one. And you see, I, I'm moving both of them at the same time. It's because uh, the size of my brush will have an influence on the uh, uh, um, surrounded these spheres. The wider, the more you will stretch all these spheres. And if you have a small values, 
we just move this one. And now we start really to build the fingers. Um, and what I do is um, I will just create, uh, you see, for my hand uh, right now, uh, the currently this selected these spheres uh, is here. This is this area, this part. And uh, the other one are uh, um, like the tendons you see here, or the first phalange of uh, the thumb. And um, I will create directly until the end of the finger, which I will scale down a little bit. And then I will insert after in between my Z spheres, uh, because I prefer working that way. Like that. making them a little bit more and scaling them down slightly and you see when you have this kind of transparent effect which appears in the brush it means that when i regenerate the skin of my model perhaps i will have some topology issues then it's important trying to move slightly your model and see okay if i can fix it or not okay then now i have let's say a, a, a roof uh, shape Trying to be a bit smaller. But already at, the, at this stage, you can see if you are good or not with your hand or not. Let me scale down a little bit. And then with draw mode, I can say, oh, I had one extra sphere. Like this. And then one and two. One, two. One, two, one, and two. Of course, after you need to uh, uh, reshape your, your your model and your topology and sculpting, but uh, that's um, that's great. Um, did you, sorry, I didn't look at the chat. <laughs> uh, okay. What time is it? Okay, I'm not too late. And if you press the A key, this is what the brush will generate. And um, yeah, my thumb, I need to go back. to scale it a little bit more. And it's important to try to uh, uh, move your model as much as possible the way it should be now, because it will be less constraint when you will sculpt on your model with the topology and so on. Um, about this hand, uh, my ten, ten, yeah, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I was looking at my proportion at the same time. Um, when you are at this level, then I, I want to uh, refine my just the shape by itself before going to sculpt on my model. And if you go in adaptive skin, 
This is where you have this preview button or you press the A key uh, to display your topology. And right now you have a density slider and you see it's just adding more or less density. But if you look at that, we see the polygons, but if you look at here, oh, it's very quite dense because this is a Dynamesh by default. Uh, since ZBrush 4 R8, it's using Dynamesh uh, to do the, the preview of uh, of the model, uh, because in fact a lot of people, since uh, multiple versions, are using Dynamesh directly on these spheres. Um, but um, I, I, I would like to um, to uh, edit my topology and not using Dynamesh. And to do that, I go back in without my preview mode and the Dynamesh slider. I put it to zero. And now, if I pressing my A key. This is what I see so far. You see? And this is the topology that the brush is giving me. And uh, you see this kind of big, big, big uh, 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 vertex connected to uh, all these big quads which are stretched is because I have one Z sphere connected to multiple Z spheres. And you need to keep in mind that Z spheres, to have an optimum topology, it's better to work. Um, with the idea that a sphere is more like a cube. And if you want to have uh, um, an extension of this sphere, in fact, a connector between two these spheres, because just in terms of name, uh, let me uh, remove the polyframe, what you see in white is the name is a connector. And you have a sphere, of course, a Z sphere between these two connectors. And it's best to have one sphere like this one and having one connector on this side, another one on the other side, on the right, on the right, on the left, on top and bottom, like a cube, and you can extrude all the faces. If you start to have one face, like this one, and connect it to uh, multiple sphere to the same, let's say, face, the, the, uh, this, if I'm aligned with my uh, here, like this as a mirror, uh, it's better to have just one. And in my scenario, I have five of them. That's why you have this kind of weird topology. Obviously, if you increase the density, it will be slightly better, but uh, not perfect. But at least for me, it's enough to, sorry, using my move brush or my other brushes just to refine my shape before starting to sculpt and having way more details on my model. That's why I won't use Dynamesh at this stage, but just the shape like it is right now. And something which is very important to remember, I talked before about I may rig my model to do some modifications, etc., etc. Then, uh, since it's a Z spheres, why not using the Z spheres as a rigging? For later, then I will use, of course, this one later. Then I keep this one and I click on this make adaptive skin. And now it's coming just a small uh, important point. Um, I saw a lot of people, even myself, time to time, but I know what I'm doing, obviously, um, just not clicking on this make adaptive skin, but going on top and clicking on this make poly make 3D. And if you want to know the difference between make poly make 3D and make adaptive skin, which is creating polygons at the end. There is one difference. Let me first click on this Make Adaptive Skin. I click on it and the brush created this PM3D, Polymesh 3D, these spheres. And I have my model, which is, let's say, ready to be sculpted. Now I go back to my these spheres and now in Adaptive Skin, I will click on this Make Adaptive Skin. And now I have the skin, these spheres and this PM, you see, and except the color of polygroups say, uh, what is the difference? Just look at one thing. When on my PM3D, the density of my polygons, and if I click now in skin sphere, I have less polygons. In fact, I have still the same amount of polygons, but the skin, if I go in geometry, I have two subdivision levels. While PM3D, I don't have subdivision levels. I just have raw polygons. When you click on this make polymesh 3D, it just look at what is your current model and creating a sculptable model with what it is right now. It doesn't care very subdivision levels or things like that. It just create a new model with the current polygons levels. Why clicking on this make adaptive skin? Sorry, I don't see, uh, I don't have it anymore. Here, adaptive skin. If I have, you see my density is at two or let's say at three, the more I add. In fact, by clicking on this make adaptive skin, it will create 
a new polymesh 3D and we reproduce the subdivision level you have right now, in fact, corresponding to the density. Then when you are working with these spheres, if you are not in dynamesh mode for this sphere, but real subdivision levels, it's better to click on this Make Adaptive Skin. This is what I did. Uh, let me go back to one level and then let me delete this PM 3D Z spheres. I don't need to keep it. It's useless for me. Uh, delete. Yes. And I'm go back to this skin. And now I will be able at least to change the shape of my fingers as much as possible before sculpting on them because later what I will do is obviously I will change this topology I mean I will sculpt to, 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 to reshape but right now it's not very nice but the good thing is I have very few points which is a great thing is if you want to reshape your model less points means easier and faster to change the shape of your model like the top of my fingers. I want to make them more flat like that. Or going from the bottom and stretching them from the back. And making them, you see, few polygons means something quite faster. And the good thing about Dynamesh, uh, Dynamesh or these spheres, uh, is that uh, I have for each phalange, phalanges, this, this part of the fingers, um, I have a visual representation thanks to the polygroups color. I don't know how much I will, uh, how far, sorry, I will sculpt these fingers. I'm not sure yet, but at least I have few, few polygons which make that easier. There is so many things that people don't know in the brush or don't use, let's say, the best way. Even myself, I mean, uh, even if I'm working at Pixelogic, so many times I'm discovering things during a meeting or development meeting, say, oh, I didn't know that. Or I never thought about doing that that way. And this is really what I love about the brushes. I mean, it's it's just a, a productivity and creativity booster. I, re I really love that. And I'm not saying that because, of course, I'm working at Pixelogic, but really because this is what I'm thinking. The internal part will be uh, sculpted in a different way, of course. And sometimes you, you may have, you see this, uh, uh, hidden polygons like this. It's not that you have a hole in your model, it's only the triangulation, which is not in the good direction, which give this kind of uh, um, effect on your model. Uh, Aluka, um, why is it whenever I use this sphere and I press A, uh, after some sculpting, I accidentally press A again and I lost all the sculpting? How do I stop that? Um, it's because uh, you are doing, let's say, a very common mistake. 
is you are on these spheres, like these, these spheres, like it is right now. Let me just go back on this sphere and say, oh, now I press the A key and even if I'm in Dynamesh mode, let's say, I don't know if you are in, you've been in Dynamesh or not, but you were so in Dynamesh. Um, I go back to Dynamesh resolution, let's say that one. Okay. And, and say, oh, great. And, and, and you sculpt and uh, uh, doing, sorry, uh, some modifications and, and things like that. And then you press the A key. Now, since for R8, you have this warning. Say, oh, you are in this sphere, take care. You will lose your stuff. Um, then what before was, it does that and going here and say, oh, I press it again and it's lost. Then it's because you've been working in these spheres. In fact, the sculpting process inside of these spheres is not what I would advise because you are working in a way of a temporary uh, a topology on top of a, a mathematical representation of your model, which are these spheres. Uh, then it's very, if you want to avoid that, the only thing to do is when you are done with, oops, sorry, with your these spheres like that and you generate a model cr click on this make adaptive skin which will create like i did before this skin stuff and then work on this one don't sculpt on a z sphere model and anyway all your z sphere model except if you rename your model will be named z sphere something and a number most of the time and if you are creating a polymesh 3d or an adaptive skin it will be skin like underscore z spheres or PM3D underscore something. Then this is the reason why you had this uh, this issue. And um, Oxar, uh, RTV, you're welcome. Okay, then now on my model, let's say I'm okay with that, um, but I'm not okay with the topology uh, uh, in between and then I need to reshape more the hand and thing like that. Uh, I will start to sculpt my model and to do that, uh, I will delete my lowest level of subdivision and I will switch to Dynamesh. And now I'm in Dynamesh mode and I have something like 32,000 polygons, uh, which is far enough. But uh, now I'll be able to sculpt on my model. The only thing also that you need to be very careful about Dynamesh and resolution is you see this distance between your model. And if you have a low, uh, low resolution, the risk is to have these points which uh, uh, just connect to each other. Why does it happen? Simply because your voxel resolution, what I explained before, is too large and then your cube for this voxel are just in between the gap. Then the brush is trying to connecting things. Um, if I undo and increase slightly, let's say to, to 200, you see now it's way better. And for what I'm doing, it's I have a little bit too, too much polygons, but that's enough. But at one stage, and I will do that just later, uh, I will sculpt now in Dynamesh to refine my shape globally. And when I know my hand will be okay, and I will just want to refine my hand to change the, uh, the proportion of, uh, of part of the finger or adding the nails and things like that, I will simply use subdivision levels because it will be just a little bit of stretching, not massive stretching or a massive uh, massive uh, addition of topology, uh, topology or, 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 or shape and thing like that. Then subdivision levels will be way better. Uh, then now I will really start to sculpt. Of course, I can smooth slightly everything to remove this uh, very angular. You see, just my thumb here, it should be more like that, uh, uh, just like this. And I need to, to refine all of that. I will try with Dynamesh, but perhaps it will be easier to do that with subdivision levels. You see, because I Dynamesh model, which was very cubic, it's very hard to smooth because I have too many polygons now on my model. I think it's quite too thick, you see, yeah, it's way too thick. Uh, 
let me use my dumpster brush. It's more landmarks that I am adding right now. But you will see that I will really, really refine this hand when I will be in uh, subdivision levels. I don't know how much I will work on the nails because uh, on such figurine uh, and the scale I, I will uh, print, even if I will print a, a big part, I mean a, a big model, um, it won't be that big. Can you reformulate your question, Alucard? Because uh, how do we often charge people for my sculpting? I don't know what you mean by often. Uh, after, of course, it's up to you how you do your business. But uh, okay, now let's start to sculpt. Ah, I need to put my other landmarks. try to, to do something which is uh, uh, again uh, perfect and uh, it's not during a live stream that I will be able to do something really perfect uh, but I'm trying at least to be um, come on save the brush um, but uh, Aluka, I understand that you want to charge per sculpture for 3D printing but it's really up but uh, I mean this is the often uh, charging a project, whatever, if this is for 3D printing or something else, it really depends about the size of the project and what is required to you. If it's required just to sculpt a model and not doing the preparation, like splitting parts and creating keys and things like that, it's not, uh, I mean, you won't charge the same as preparing your model. On my side, I would charge uh, uh, at least a third of the project is a part of preparing the model for 3D printing. Because for some model like 2B characters I did for Nier Automata, let me just share the link. Um, uh, for this project I, I'm sharing on screen, where are you? I put the link in the chat. And some of you already know this project because I did that during a, a, a live stream was one of my main uh, first live stream. Then you see this model, come on, go back. Uh, you see just this robot, uh, the pod from uh, Nier Automata. Uh, and this is not the final one, because the final one have more articulation. Just doing the preparation of splitting this model, thinking about how you print uh, uh, your part. And if I'm going back to the character itself, you see all these parts, which are a total of 48 parts. Um, just that takes 
quite some time because you need to consider where you will split. Do you need to mold or not molding after your 3D print? You, the painting process that it will fit or not inside of the printer, the support to understand the support. I mean, it's quite a lot of knowledge in addition just to the artistic aspect. And for this project, I think at, at, I spent at least a third of the total time just in 3D printing preparation from the brush and after in the software to optimize the model, checking there is no issues and things like that. And then, which is a part of the job I did, was to go in preform and adding all the supports, all the organization. And I don't even mention if you are doing, let's say, some post work like sending and things like that. And the materials and, and um, like that. And that's why it's it's very difficult. It's really, uh, it depends. If you are printing, let's say, for doing for 3D printing to do a kind of avatar based on the, a, a crappy 3D scan stuff in color. Okay, you will spend, I don't know, two hours to clean your model and 30 minutes to, to, to prepare your model for the printing. It's there is almost nothing. That's fine. But if you're doing figurines like I'm doing right now, that's quite a part of the project. And especially, like I said, if you are you want to do some molding, for me, for the, this previous project I just presented uh, now, I just did a 3D sculpt. I didn't mold my model. But if I had to mold, that's something I'm learning, in fact, right now, the molding. Um, you don't have the same constraint at all. Then this is another layer of constraint that you need to consider. Because if you do nice models, which you can print, but which are almost impossible to mold and to cast, it may be useless. And that's why it's... Um, it's really, it really depends of your project and uh, the quality, the details and, and things like that. I know that if I had to, to, to charge for 3D printing, I won't, I, I, I mean, I can't be cheap. Because now by experience, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of work, really a lot of work. Especially if you are going for commercial and then production work. And in fact, you have a lot of people asking, oh, Thomas, would it be possible to do this project for me? First of all, I'm an employee of a company, then it would be difficult. Uh, also, I don't have a lot of time. And then for me now, I know how much time is it to, to do a model. Yeah, it's very time consuming. That's why when you see people complaining, I, I'm thinking about a company which name is Tume Art, uh, which was one of our sponsors for the first ZBrush Summit, which is a, 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 a French company, not based in France, but a French company. And they, they are doing a lot, a lot of figurines using ZBrush and, uh, and now more and more so traditional. They are mixing, in fact, both, uh, both techniques. And a lot of people say, oh, wow, it's so expensive for your figurines. It can be a 400, 600, uh, even 1,000 of euros. But when you see some other companies like, um, um, uh, oh, uh, American one, uh, oh, for that. Um, I have legacy effect, which is not related at all, at all with that. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not finding the name and I don't like that. Um, uh, come on, I will find that. Uh, why do I have French results? I don't want to have French results. Uh, help me in the chat. <laughs> the big name of our figurines. Uh, come on. Uh, when I say that I'm forgetting the names, uh, yeah, Sideshow Collectibles, not XM. I was really thinking about Sideshow Collectibles because, uh, of course, XM Studios are doing great stuff. Um, and all these really such will say, oh, it's, I mean, they are so nice, but so expensive. But you can't imagine the amount of work behind these figurines and statues. It's just crazy. Because again, this is not only sculpting, but the preparations. 
and the knowledge required to do all these preparations. Because the artists behind know exactly what are the, I mean, some of them at least, perhaps not all, but the constraints of uh, uh, doing these figurines. And they, 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 keep, they keep all of these constraints in mind when they are sculpting. Uh, all along the process, and uh, it's uh, it's quite a lot of knowledge that you need to, uh, to to gain. That's why when I see people uh, telling me, "Oh, I, I want to do figurines," uh, I really want to do figurines. Say, "Oh, great! This I mean something great. I, I would love to do figurines full time, uh, really." But uh, let's say it's not really for beginners. Oh, of course, yes, you can be beginners, but it's a lot, a lot of work and you need to be ready to, to spend quite some time experimenting and trying. And of course, you can be a good figurine artist. I mean, yes, you can be a very good figurine artist, but without a 3D printer and having knowledge of 3D printer, because as soon as you know the constraint of 3D printing, like I said just a few seconds ago, you will understand this constraint of uh, um, 3D printing and you will integrate this constraint at the beginning of your workflow and which is very critical, very very important. Yes, doing hands is always very long <laughs> and you know what I will do soon, I will convert to subdivision levels because I will have more control about all of these shapes. Uh, uh, also another brush, which a lot of people don't consider why well, it's a great brush, is using the move topological brush, which is the next one here. And when you are sculpting now, you see I have less interaction with the other part. And when I'm at this level, I have no interaction with the other part of the model because it will analyze the topology around the brush with a certain distance which is which you can find in uh, auto masking in brush palette and you have uh, topological masking with a range which is a distance if you reduce the range then the distance after your brush will be shorter and if i remember the uh, slider value is de -de 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 -de. ah shimatta um yeah, you see, this is based on the uh, brush size. Say that if your brush I mean, you, its value set to three, like that, it will analyze the topology uh, around the brush three times the distance of the brush. But following the topology, meaning if I'm sculpting here, it will go all around like that for the topology. And this is a, a great brush to use. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know this brush. The problem is it's, it's more uh, CPU intensive because it needs to uh, analyze the topology each time you are doing your, your, your sculpting. And you see, in, 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 I mean, of course, it's not yet a, a very nice hand. I, I need to reshape this part especially. But uh, with these spheres and then some brushes, quickly you can start to have a hand uh, way faster than what you could do with uh, uh, traditional modeling. Thank you. 
Okay. The only thing I will start to do now will be just to flatten a little bit my fingers because they are too rounded. Don't forget that the shape of your fingers is more um, uh, flatter and wider on the top and then smaller. Um, I don't know how to express that, but it's uh, like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know the name, even in French, of the mathematical shape, but uh, uh, it's not exactly how they are right now. If I'm doing just a quick shape, it should be like that, like that, like that. You see more, more of this kind of of shape. Flat, a bit here, more there, more there, and uh, that's why I'm refining. And unfortunately, this is the same for each finger, one by one, uh, like this one, which is. Just doing one hand can could take, I mean, at least a full day just to be very nice. Unfortunately, I don't have a full day to do a hand. And at least I'm trying before doing my retopology, trying to be a little bit uh, uh, better. Because the more I do now, the less I will do after. Now let me sculpt that. Because Uh, oh, I forgot to uh, answer a question. Do I have to root a pool for my prints? Yes and no. Uh, for 3D printing, you don't care about the topology, meaning that uh, it will print, in fact, it will just slice your model, and most of the printer, in fact, are using voxels just to build the envelope of your model, and then at this stage, will uh, for each slice, of course, creating the pattern for the laser of the the uh, uh, hot head, uh, not head, um, the nozzle. Sorry, to uh, follow a path, or just having uh, um, a slice of your model for DLP type printers. Um, then it's not very important, but for the quality of your sculpt, it's better to have a nice topology because a nice topology means that it will flow the direction of your shape uh, and. Um, and then by doing that, you will have a, a, a better control of uh, on your strokes and the quality of your model. And that's why I'm trying, if possible, to have a, a retopology and as much as possible as a nice retopology. But I won't spend, let's say, a day to retopologize the model for 3D printing, at least for all the models I did so far, because it's not that needed. I mean, what is important is that it looks visually speaking correct, fine, and good quality. For 3D printing, of course. Let me finish that. What time is it? Yeah, I don't know if I will have the time to do one foot. Uh, yeah, my fetch is quite too long, but uh, you see, I need to fix that.
sorry, I'm, I stopped talking a few minutes because I really want to focus on that. something was wrong yes yeah, something is definitely wrong because yeah <laughs> ah. printer is down sorry I can't show you the printer but uh, it's done I think something was wrong with my thumb. Um, Mike, uh, oh yes, sorry, I forgot your question. Uh, it's Tim Dan, yes, I was printing uh, a, um, a base for a stand for another model, a lightsaber. Um, my Ketuki, uh where did you get the clips you use to hold parts that you prime? Uh, what do you mean by clips that I use to hold? Ah, you mean this kind of clips? Um, uh let me uh oh I, I showed that to a friend recently i found that on amazon uh like uh, uh what was the name i found it was something like uh yeah you mean that stuff oops sorry this kind of things. It's I just I search something like uh, uh, airbrush uh, support or clip. You see, alligator clip stand. Can look at something like that. Um, do, 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 and ah, uh, the drainage. Uh, um, I don't know how to say that drainage uh, holes around. Uh, uh, pegs and, and, and hips and things like that. It's because I, I, the more holes you have, the less suction cup you will have because some parts are, are hollowed for my model. Let me show you on screen what you're speaking about. Sorry, I just closed the... Okay, I'm going back to my model and I think you are speaking about these holes like that and I think it's maybe visible you see like this and here there and I have that on multiple parts because you see uh, this is really the hips that you see here and uh, you have um, waist, 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 I'm not sure about the name, sorry for the name in English. Uh, because I have the keys, this kind of plug that I'm using to, to connect together. The problem is the model has been hollowed, of course, to save some resin because uh, the print is quite massive. And um, the problem is if you you are hollowing your you, you do the hollowing of your model, but you don't have holes to let your resin flow inside of your model uh, or the air as well, you will can create inside of your model a suction cup, which will just stick. Or, or, or stick strongly to the uh, silicone layer at the bottom of your printer. And each time it will print and then trying to peel your, your print for the silicone layer at the top of uh, the bottom, sorry, of the resin tank, it will put a lot of strength. And if you, you don't have these holes to be sure that the resin will flow and not having this sticking, uh, 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 sucking effect <laughs> uh, on, on your model, um, it will do a lot of strength on the support which can break uh, uh, during the print, uh, 
and want it to totally break your model fall inside of the printer, which create a, 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 a failed print. Or something else is it can also try to push, put a lot of pressure, and because uh, it may have some very uh, thin uh, um, uh, um, uh, layers and thickness for your model, uh, because of the pressure it can uh, 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 degenerate. Let me show you one image. Uh, uh, it will perhaps be more, uh, it will speak you, uh, um, it will be more visible. Sorry, this is a print, uh, a friend uh, of me who um, uh, owned a Form 1 and had recently, recently some, some failures. And um, uh, I think it, yeah, it deleted the images. I can't show that. Sorry, it was a good example about. Uh, okay, let let me show you that in in in, in preform, because I have the 3D model. Okay, uh, let me remove the wings. Okay, then you see you have this kind of sphere and you have a small hole on top because you say oh. Uh, it's important to have uh, a hole to have then the resin flowing and avoiding the suction cup, which is the theory. But the hole in orientation is very important. Then when the printer is starting to print, it's starting from the bottom and printing this uh, a kind of raft, the support, and then at this stage start to print the model layers by layers. And when you arrive at some level, because the kind of sphere, you see I'm going layer by layer, at this stage, you have this opening and you have a kind of uh, 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 rounded shape, you see, like that. And until this level, you have this big uh, 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 bowl uh, uh, on your model. And for each layer, because you don't see that, what you see below is the build platform. And on the other side, on top, that you don't see here, you will have this part will be print between the silicon layer at the bottom of the printer. And, uh, and the previous layer, it's in between. In fact, it's upside down. Right now, you see from the top of your model. And what you see here on top is the bottom part. And at this stage, it's time the printer is going up to unstick the model and then going down. It will create a suction cup. And then, even if you have a lot of support, the strength will be very strong and it starts to fail until that you arrive at this level and you have a small hole enough to remove the pressure. But the, the, the print failed totally, starting at something like this level because of the strength. And the strength can be very strong, especially if you have a, a very uh, 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 wide, uh, uh, large thickness. Thickness is quite big. Then there is not enough, let's say, flexibility to try to avoid uh, the, the suction cup. Then when I'm speaking about preparing for Fuji printing, you see, like a model like that, this hand, if I print a full model like this, yeah, that's fine. But if you start to split your model and, and optimizing and things like that, uh, it's, it's not that easy. Then this is all the thing you need to consider during the preparation and all these holes, because when I did my model, I, I, I have no idea exactly how will be the orientation, but I, I knew that I will have the suction cup effect if I don't have enough holes. Then I created as much holes as possible. Then the idea for this hole was not to save some resin. It was more to give more freedom to the resin to flow inside of my model. I'm sorry, this is a lot of very theoretical stuff, but you need to expand that yourself. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of things to, to consider and, and keep in mind. Uh, sorry for this big talk. <laughs> Okay, I was on editing my uh, thumb. Yeah, I did a big mistake with my thumb. I did an extra phalange. Phalange? I don't know how to say that in English. So just the part. I have two parts here, and then the third is inside. Uh, in fact, I did almost four, uh, four of them. Because this one, yeah, is more on the root part. And that's why it's important to fix all of this, these mistakes now and not later. And again, if you want to clean your topology because you see uh, 
there I can stretch a lot more. In fact, not that much, which is fine. But if you need, you can update the Dynamesh. I won't do it. I will I will just undo because you see, I started to do some details and my Dynamesh just shrink a little bit my details uh, where I don't, I mean, it's not needed. And, uh, Sakaki clay fill brush. I love this brush. Yeah, I know my hand is not the best one. Trust me, I'm trying to do my best. <laughs> I think it will be better now. Anyway, there is a big chance that I will change the topology, the topology later. My mask lasso, where are you, mask lasso? Up. Need to move slightly my hand on the side. I think I need to scale a little bit. Sorry, I'm looking at my fingers. My phalange is here, rounded. I'm looking at the arc circles. It should be roughly like that. Finger out a bit too thick. Okay, 
I thought I will be more uh, rust, rusty. <laughs> But it could be better, but it could have been worse. I think fingers are a little bit too long right now. Yeah, I think they are a little bit too long. Or oh, in fact, this is more the hand itself, which is not long enough. Yeah. You see, typically this type of model that I will print just as a test. Because I know that when I will come back to that tomorrow, I say, oh, <laughs> why it's like that here, why it's not like this. And, uh, and I will probably rotate slightly my thumb. And I'm I'm softening as much as possible my uh, my topology. You see, my finger is really perpendicular like that, which is not natural. It should be more at 45 degrees, roughly. And I will rotate more like that. Another reason why I like using transpose uh, also, uh, and not always the gizmo, is because I can, for the same uh, action line, having multiple uh, uh, actions. Uh, you see the rotation, I've been able to rotate from one side and then the other side of the same action line. Of course, for some operation like manipulating my objects or doing quick transformation, I think that the gizmo is way better. Then it's really up about up to you about the way you're doing things. And uh, I mean, it's always important to find what is the best workflow for you, and not sticking about what you think is the best. I mean, it's I mean, it's important trying to see what what would be the best for you. Um, My skin tension, which was missing, which was a reason why it was so weird. Now let me change off matcap because I know that, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
I've just had some quick details and well no I, I, I will do the nails um, more on the final skirt okay let, let me just now reduce the topology I know the hand is not done see also a part which need to, to be refined but um, let's re topologize that now because I want to add it uh, at least uh, putting that uh, close to my model not just these spheres sorry uh, and speaking of proportions uh, sorry uh, again <laughs> editing Because the topology generated by ZBrush will follow my uh, my modification, and that's why it's important to have uh, uh, at least as much as possible a shape which fits what you're looking for. Hi, Alina. I hope you enjoy your stream. Alina, join us uh, on ZBrush Live. Uh, uh, for the first stream today, if I'm not wrong, uh, which was the first stream we had in Russian language. Um, then you see we are expanding uh, uh, ZBrush Live in uh, multiple languages. Now we have then Russian, we have Spanish, we have Japanese, we have French with me, and English. And uh, we hope to add more languages in, in the future. I would like to add more, Cor I would like to add some Korean languages, uh, which would be great, I think. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we have the brush artists everywhere, in all, all around the world, in all over the world, and I think it's great to uh, to be able to uh, just share our, 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 I mean, our love about digital sculpting. Okay, let's save my project. <laughs> you don't have to be stressed about the stream and let's say we are just all together between uh, uh, artists then uh, it's not uh, don't stress yourself <laughs> well and, and to be honest I'm I have less stress when I'm doing my streams in French and not in English and it's been a while I didn't stream in French and uh, I need to restart my random skirt uh, streams the problem is each time I'm doing it in French, like you did in, in, in Russian, you have people joining and want to have the same stuff in English and, and then you end up by doing a mix of French and English, uh, which is kind of problematic. Okay, now uh, I'm, let's say, done with uh, uh, the, the draft of the hand. Uh, I will duplicate my, my hand and on this duplicated model, I will just do just as a test a uh, zero measure. I will use, I remove my Dynamesh, the remesher, and just as is, like that, just pressing. And for sure, perhaps I will have some uh, 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 helix stuff or not best topology. And I think 5000 polygons is a bit, it's a bit too much. But you see, this is what I had. And to be honest, it's not that bad. Uh, I just have, I think, too many, sorry, too many polygons. Let me just duplicate because I want to keep that one safe and I will undo now and um, I will put half of the resolution or, or yeah let's say two and the remesh uh, let's try even lower uh, yeah, it's yeah, that's good. That's really good. Let me duplicate. 
going back and let's say just one oops zero mesh you will see Alina it's very enjoyable to do these streams and and for me it's a breather let's say uh, I'm very happy to do this stream even if sometimes I don't really know what I will do exactly, how far I will go, perhaps we just to crap stuff. But I think it's great to share with people and and, and uh, uh, discussing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, I will stay with this hand, but if I just go back in my sub tools, you see it was the original one, then the retopology, then the lowest one. This one is like this. Uh, uh, dancer. Then you see the variation of density. And this is why, at least for 3D printing, I don't need to have something very dense. I just want to have my topology. Oh, I uh, know uh, 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 uh. Ah, this is just a quad. Uh, my topology is far enough for 3D printing process. Because what I want to do is to be able to reshape my hand, uh, changing the proportions, but um, I won't animate my model. I will do a pose, but I know for sure that I will sculpt my pose because this is a hand at a resting position. But if I want to do a fist like that, um, of course, I will need to refine the, the wrinkles of uh, uh, just the shape of the hand and contrasting some, some details or removing some of those. Then well, not a big deal. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Then that's good. I will keep that one and I will delete the others. Delete. Okay, and delete. Okay, then this one. And at this stage, what I will do, just checking always, going around if I don't see some topology which may be problematic. But so far, I mean, uh, I won't foresee any kind of issues with uh, what I will do later. And I have not a lot of polygons enough to be uh, just uh, uh, reshaped. Uh, then I'll display again my original topology, and this one, you see, I have. Uh, on this one, 78,000 of polygons, and I will divide until I have at least 78 and a little bit more this time. Then I have this Dynamesh model, and it's going back about my Dynamesh versus subdivision level explanation uh, I did uh, during this stream. Is uh, I have my Dynamesh model, then my this uh, my uh, retopologized model with my subdivision levels, and I said on this one I want to project the details on this one. Uh, if I'm going in slow mode, you see this is my hand right now, and but I want to have back my original uh, details. Then I go in subtool project and project all, and I'm waiting a little bit, few seconds, and it's done. Now I can hide, and this is my model with my sculpting details, even if it was just a little bit, but I have back my shape. And now the good thing is I can go down in resolution and up to refine my model. And if I want to change, come on, save the brush, save. Uh, Yeah, <laughs> Alina, yes, always the last minute stuff. You know, for this stream, I don't know why, but my bandwidth is going up and down. I lost 34,000 frames since the beginning of this stream. I don't know why, most of the time I have very good connection. And yeah, that's why I'm streaming in 720p and not uh, at a higher resolution, just to be sure that it will be uh, uh, mean better. Okay, then now I have less polygons, then it's good for me to uh, just reshape. My model really the way I want. Because I have less polygons, it's a lot easier to reshape everything. That's why I prefer by far working with subdivision levels. Even if I love Dynamesh for concepting, but when it comes to uh, really reshape, reshape, and reshape, it's so much faster. I think my hand is too thick. Okay. 
And by doing that, I don't care about my details I have on top because I know ZBrush is preserving them. And it's always better to work with very few polygons. And now if I want to sculpt more, let's say just, let's do uh, one nail. See, it's quite faster to work that way. I can even go down a little bit if I want to refine my top part of my nail to do it a little bit longer, which is not a good idea for 3D printing because it increases the risk of the need of support depending on the position of my hand if I print. Because if I print my model like that, if I have a big nail, then I will have to have support at the beginning of the nail and then below for the beginning of the, the tip of the, the finger. Um, but the idea is just to show you that, you see, uh, we can start to uh, doing this kind of nails very quickly. And then go down and say, oh, it's too thick, not thin enough. And if you want to do that in Dynamesh, it's way more complicated because you have less control on your model. Of course, I, I won't do uh, uh, the, I will try to do offline the other fingers because this is always the same process, but uh, at least you see what it is. Let's make the nail a little bit more rounder. And if I'm lacking of polygons, for whatever reason, of course, I can increase the resolution of my model by doing a control D to subdivide your model. Uh, I was looking at your book, Cigar. Uh. I'm tired, a cigar rush. Uh, okay, what time is it? Okay, need to be done. Of course, we're done soon. Uh, okay, something I need to look at because it's been a while I didn't do that is now let's say I have my fingers, which is not done, obviously. Let me just save to be sure first. because I didn't rig in ZBrush 
but it's been a while I didn't rig a, a, a in the brush. Then what I can do is taking my Z sphere like that. And I think what I need to do first is to reduce just the thickness of my, uh, and you see, you can use the Alt key when you are scaling uh, um, one of the uh, foundation connector like that. And you see, you can change like that globally the thickness of your uh, Z spheres model. Um, then what I can do is going in uh, my settings and in rigging, I can select a mesh, which is my Z skin hand. Oh, let me first be sure that let me go back to this one because I don't need any more the dynamesh. Let me delete it. And um, left hand. Yeah, left, left, yes. <laughs> and these spheres. And now if I go in rigging and select my left hand, you see, I'm I change the proportions in then. And what I can do is moving, you see, like that, my challenges for all of them. Of course, I need to be very careful to have my connectors on the good position. If I want to have the best result, And if I have better sculpting results uh, uh, later, Okay, let's try that. Um, and now if I'm binding my model, now if I'm rotating, you see, I'm able to rotate like that. Of course, it won't be the best rig. I'm doing that very quickly, but uh, but with few clicks later, it would be easier to resculpt something which is already in a pose like that than trying to. Uh, using transpose uh, and uh, You see, this is where I say I have some proportion issues because it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> but I can just uh, cheat, cheat, cheating. 
a little bit. Uh, oh, it should be below, by the way, uh, because you don't put your uh, fingers like that. Um, let me just undo that. Now you press the A key and you have this result, uh, which is right now, in fact, when I'm pressing the A key, a dynamesh resolution. Then let me just undo that too. And this is what I have so far. Then yes, of course, it needs to be uh, improved and resculpt, but it's faster to work like that than trying to uh, uh, redo everything. And more important, I should have my uh, two or four subdivision levels oh, i don't like that yeah just to be sure it will project the same uh, uh, details on my model of course you see i need to refine my rig but the idea was to show you that uh, it can be useful oh, i don't know why i have this wave effect oh interesting i think i have too much these fears i need to simplify i think my um, my rig anyway the idea was really to show you the ID behind uh, all of that. But I need to do that when my uh, hand will be done and refining my rig. I think my Z-spheres are too large. I need to make them a lot um, 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 thinner, not that thick. Okay. Uh... Okay, uh, let me go back to my left hand and let's see what I will do during uh, in between. I mean, I hope if I have the time before the next stream will be to refine my hand and sculpting it uh, in a better way because I have proportion with uh, this part of the hand and the fingers. Uh, what I can do anyway is to copy this tool, going back here and as a sub tool, oh, not happened, passing it. Where are you, the hand? In your head. It's more a placeholder than anything else. I'm just smoothing quickly, just a way to hide. Because now when you are like that, I think at least for me, this is easier to see uh, what's going on and uh, me duplicate this hand again this is a placeholder but it will help me for the body uh, right hand going up to maximum level of division subdivision sorry and I will do a delete lower why because I will do a mirror in deformation and mirror doesn't like subdivision level then I deleted them, but now I can go back in geometry and say reconstruct me the subdivision levels. And now I have back my subdivision levels. And you see like that, I'm able at least to see uh, if the body and uh, 
hands are roughly in shape or not. You see my hands are very uh, um, massive, not very feminine uh, enough, but at least it helps me uh, to see what I, uh, I'm doing. And of course, it could be the same for the feet. Sorry, I'm <laughs> fixing uh, part of my model. Okay, what time is it? Oh, I will stop here. I will go something more with a hand like that. Probably before and after. I need to look at some female hands references. Just to be sure. I won't do a lot of edits because I will go back to the original model, but at least I see what is going on. Like that part. And I think I, I need to have less structure for my less details because it will be more a kind of anime's hand and even the big punch which will be used for the fight with the hairs uh, i mean uh, uh, this fight uh, this fight whew, this fits uh, done i mean uh, um, uh, created by the hairs of the characters uh, i mean it would be uh, shaped with hairs then i don't need so much details then uh, i need to be very careful i think my fingers are a little bit too long compared to my hand and this is again what i need to fix okay let me save that. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought I would have done more stuff today, but um, too bad. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, yes, I should do some hairs as well. It's very psychological, but let me clone my model and let's go with these levels of subdivisions. I don't want to have more geometry. I will delete my highest and lowest level, level, level of subdivision. And I have my T hair brush. I don't know if you remember, I explained this brush, um, which lets me grow some hairs on my model. Uh, I can uh, increase the size, of course, but like that, at least I will be able to uh, to create some uh, quick hairs. You see, like this. I don't want to do very nice stuff. What I want to do right now is to to have something to look at. much <laughs> a 
again it's not the final hairs it's just to have a kind of, again of a, of a feeling that I have a shape on my model Uh, you see it's trying to snap on my surface and I can go in my stroke palette, come on stroke, stroke palette and in my curve function I have the bend and snap. I can remove the snap like that I can put inside of my model if I can, okay like that and now I can put back my snap functionality and you see it goes up but at least more inside of my model. And the idea will be to hide uh, at least uh, the existing hairs to have them less visible. Oops. Sometimes the hairs, I mean, the curves can be uh, tricky to use, but they are very helpful. And if you want to increase the length, you need to be just close to the end of the curve and then you can start to continue if you can. Yeah, my snap is too big, then let me just reduce. Come on. Like this, now I can increase the size. And what I'm doing right now is what I will do uh, when I will really create the hairs of the character. Okay, now I'm done with the hairs. And as you can see, I have multiple polygroups and I can hide this one. I invert my selection, I have all my hairs and now I can do an auto group in polygroups like that each strand of hair will have its own polygroup. I can do a split hidden then in sub tool split split hidden I just have my hairs I can copy them I can go back in my complete model and pass them as a new uh, model. And now if I'm using my move brush with in the brush I'm using the mask by polygroup functionality at the maximum. Now I'm able to change just uh, the one that I'm manipulating like this and not the other ones. Uh, for um, 
Derry zero one. I don't know. I'm not sure of your where you pronounce your nickname. Uh, for this brush, I think it's on my website. Uh, I think this is on the French uh, download. Uh, yes, it's on my website. The download section, you have the white, the, the police skin matte cap, but it's now in the brush. But you have this T hair brush. Um, it's not the latest one because in the brush for R8 now we keep the brush uh, curve uh, uh, direction. Uh, I have some other brushes like this T spline, uh, T super line. Anyway, uh, the only thing that you will do when you will load this brush will be to go in the stroke palette and in um, the curve uh, function, uh, no, modifier, you will have the curve fall off, which will be from left to right. And you need to put it in the other side, meaning from the bottom to the, uh, I mean, from the, oh, let me just select the brush. Uh, stroke, you see, you need to uh, have the size uh, on and the curve to be more rounded like this and not on the other side. Or you will have the tip of the hairs at the beginning of the curves and not the end, the end, sorry. Um, look, move on. Of course, you need to do uh, uh, not the hairs in symmetry, but at least you have already some hair selected. And what you can do is, you see, you can select this one, and now I can go in copy. Oh, uh, no, not copy here, sorry. Uh, I can go in uh, geometry and modify topology. You will have, uh, you will find uh, where are you copy, and now you can paste append which is a new one and uh, oh it does that in place uh, let me cancel um, yeah because it doesn't have the good polygroups ah oh, shit two groups um, geometry uh, I can do another way, in fact. It's a little bit weird. I wanted to show something, but uh, uh, it's maybe not um, the best thing to do. Then what you can do is going in transpose mode, and if you press control, you will have just everything will be masked except this polygroup. And now if you control, uh, moving with control, and doing control double, oh, oops, let me invert the mask, control W, I have different polygroups now. And I'm able to see, and then now I can control D. And with my down soda brush, let's say, Sorry, this is again a kind of draft, but to show you a little bit of process. And if you want to have more control, you can just isolate one of them like that. Uh, 
and why not adding at the end some um, uh, clay polish you know that I love this functionality of the brush Oops, and I don't need to, to go that far. And then geometry, where are you clay polish? Okay, and it's more. And oh, you see uh, about, sorry, uh, just going this uh, uh, off topic uh, point. I think I spoke about that during the last stream. Um, you see the importance of having a good topology. I don't know if you see that, but on this model, I have two weird spot shadows here. You see, and if you rotate, you see one rotating, I don't know for the compression, but you see this extraordinary point. Let me display the, poly the polyframe. You see, this is this point and this point. An extra extraordinary point is when you have one vertex which is sharing uh, uh, an um, uneven number of points, meaning three, five, seven, etc., and not four, which is the best, uh, uh, or, or, and in fact, only four. Um, then that's why you have this kind of, of kind of small pinching and you can try to smooth, but you will always have that. That's why sometimes having a nice topology, which follows the shoulder uh, muscles will be way better, way, way, way better. Say like this and um... anyway, let's end that for today. Uh because I could continue for quite some time, but I need to sleep. <laughs> I have to work tomorrow morning. Uh, you see, without the perspective, we and without. And you see, that's why I'm always taking care of working with and without. Uh, I don't know why I did, did that for the shoulder, that's stupid. Um, Anyway, some some progress at least. Uh, again, I wanted to do at least the fit, but I don't have the time. Anyway, I won't spend quite a lot of time on the fit because she will wear some shoes or, 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 or things like that. Then, uh, but I want at least a global shape and not this kind of potato uh, stuff uh, that I have here. Then I need to uh, to sculpt on that uh, a little bit more because it's very very ugly. Not very feminine. Yes, I'm saying that and I'm doing that right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, but again, having the move brush. I will do that later anyway, but um, Stop me. <laughs> I need to stop this stream. <laughs> Anyway, I will do that later. Uh, not the best time. And right now I'm just doing some shitty stuff. 
<laughs> Why have an overworld? I don't have overworld for that. <laughs> Let's smooth a little bit and let's stop at least uh, at this level. Anyway, uh, then thank you again for your time with me today. Uh, oops, sorry, I didn't look at the chat. Uh, then I'm glad if you learned some stuff, not stopping. Um, uh, um, and then Pet, I'm not sure for your, your nickname. Um, I The problem is I don't like doing realistic characters because I'm not good enough for that. Um, I won't never try to do, at least for now with my skills, I won't ever try to do some uh, likeness and thing like that. Um, because again, like I said at the beginning of the streaming, uh, as a stream, I'm not good enough in anatomy. I don't have a strong knowledge. And if you want to go to realistic characters, I think that's from my point of view, a kind of mistakes if you just try to look at the outside of the model and not understanding how the model is built from the foundation, from the ground up. Um, then that's why I prefer going more to uh, um, uh, stylized model because you are allowed to do more mistakes because, oh, if that's stylized, it's not a big deal if, let's say, the, uh, um, the, the um, I don't know, the bust is too, a little bit too wide or, or, okay, it's stylized, it's anime, it's, it's okay if there is some exaggeration and thing like that. Why, in fact, I don't agree. Even if you do stylized characters, you need to have at least a good proportion or even if you are using stylize the proportion, they need to be coherent, they need to be logical. Then that's why at least the small details won't be coherent. Because why? When you're doing something which is more realistic, uh, you have the people saying, oh, something is wrong. They won't, perhaps won't be able to spot where the mistake it is. But because it's realistic, or at least trying to be realistic, they will say, oh, it's, it's, it's off. Something is wrong. And not go going more to stylized will allow you uh, a little bit more mistakes in terms of characters. At least this is, again, what I'm thinking about all of that. Uh, and this is why I'm more going to stylistic, but there is another reason. I really enjoy anime styles and, and, and mangas and characters. I love Japan stuff um, for the culture, but also the way of working for a lot of things. Anyway, um, but uh, yes, definitely, um, this is my way to go. Um, and yes, Eagle Rush, just, just hit me on Discord. Um, uh, not, I won't enjoy the weekend. It's already, in fact, Monday for me. <laughs> this is the end of the weekend. Uh, my next stream will be next Sunday. I will stream at till mid-February and after I will need to do a break because I won't be available at Sunday night at least and I will try to um, uh, not stop and I will reply just after um, and I will try to stream more on regular basis on my personal channel even just 30 minutes or one hour but more on the French time I think um, I'll try to stream a little bit more than that but new Alina. I'm uh, sorry, I don't know to say that in Russian. Um, and uh, non-stop, and if you want to put the tear brush, you need to go, uh, let me, if you are on Windows, uh, 
Uh, or the same on Macintosh, but you need to go in ZBrush folder where ZBrush is installed. Uh, let me display my program. Sorry, I can't show you my Pixogic folder for multiple reasons. Um, then if you go in uh, ZBrush uh, 4R8 uh, P2 folder, whatever is your uh, ZBrush folder, uh, you go in this startup and then you have a brush preset folder, which could be if you are on a regular Windows program files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 4, R8 or P2, uh, P1 or P2, this startup, brush preset, and then you put your brush inside. And on Macintosh, this is applications, ZBrush for R8, uh, the startup brush process. This is exactly the same. Uh, Why well, I can't move this window? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yes, do yes, I'm addicted. Yeah, so I don't I don't sculpt enough, and when I'm sculpting, I'm happy with that. Um, anyway, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed this stream. Um, uh, anyway, I know who is streaming after me. Who is next? Uh, sorry, you see my stream. Uh, oh, Blair Armitage is streaming two days later today. Great Monday of Jose Rosales. Uh, oh, this is a pass the skirt. Great pass the skirt. You will pass the skirt to another artist. Great. And we have Joseph, uh, oh, Paul. Tuesday and Channel Son and after of course Ashley Adams really enjoy what she's doing. Anyway, um, enjoy the stream, enjoy the brush, enjoy the 3D. Share all together. Share your works on the brush central. Uh, it's great. Uh, I will post uh, probably this week. Uh, the making of, of the Kaleran helmet and the lightsaber on the brush central, which I didn't do for the, the helmets. I will start to do a thread about uh, some some extra information. And this video will be on YouTube probably Tuesday or Wednesday, and the last week one, which I'm late. And that's all. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you soon.